All right, so in the last video, I showed how I could trace a face template on top of photo reference. And then, at least with the eye, how you can customize that, because all the face template tells you is where things should occur. It doesn't give you the actual distinct shape of things like eyes or nose or lips. But let's let's take a step back before I continue with with this individual. And let me just show you how a regular face template can work. And this could work for, for anything. So if I'm just designing a character out of the blue, not trying to do a, a likeness or a portrait, let's use what we've learned. So from the front, you start with a circle. You can keep it pretty loose. That same circle can be used for your side view. So let's duplicate a side view, move it over. All right. Next, you split that circle down the middle. and you add a mandible. Now what's a realistic head shape? It's an egg shape, a chicken egg. You know if a chicken egg that you bought at the store was too narrow. You would know if a chicken egg you bought at the store was too spherical, right? But there's a lot of subtle range in, in believable egg shapes, right? So you just kind of make an egg shape. But everyone has a slightly different proportion. It's based on kind of the skin and the muscles and the fat deposits on their skull, right? Whatever you do at the front, you then carry that same kind of mandible shape on the side view. Let's merge these together. So I'm going to take that shape. See how it dips back a little bit? I'm going to line it up at the bottom, and then it hooks back to a little bit past halfway. On the side view. Okay, next I go halfway from the top to the bottom, and that's my eye line. Where the eyeballs are centered in the head when the head is looking straight ahead. Then I divide it in fifths. So if these are my two sides. I know I'm going to have one eye width in between. Then I have to carry that twice on each side figure out where my eye placement is. And that shows me that my eyes go right here and right here on my believable face template. And again, it's looking a lot like C-3PO. Okay, now I know that my nose is halfway between the eye line and the bottom of the jaw. So I cut that in half, carry that over. And then I know my nose will only be as wide as one eye width. So it makes a nice little rectangle right in the middle of the face. Then I split that bottom half, or that bottom quarter of the whole head into thirds. That top third is the separation between the lips. That bottom third shows me that little place where the skin of the jaw is tacked back to the skull and holds that little lump of the chin. doesn't matter if it's like a Jay Leno kind of chin or a Kate Moss like anemic chin. You're going to have that little divot, and it gives you the shape of the lower lip because from there the lower lip protrudes out. So on the side it might look something like that. Now, how do I figure out how wide the mouth opening is? I make a dot dead center, and then at the corner of the nose rectangle, I do kind of a straight line down, pass through, and I get the width of the mouth. I've just done this so many times, I usually can just eyeball it. 
Well, that doesn't mean that the mouth is going to be a flat line. That just shows you where that separation between the upper and lower lip is on a realistic model. The top half of the head, I split that into thirds, and I get the brow line and the default hairline. And then last, the ears on an adult are going to go between the eye line and the nose line, but pretty much fill that whole space. Sometimes ears are really close to the head, sometimes ears are angled away, but they start and stop at the same place. As that character ages, hmm. As that character ages, the ears will grow above and below those lines. If a character is really young, like not even a teenager, this facial template, as long as they have adult teeth, this facial template works, but the ears will be smaller. So the ears might be kind of like this, in like a tween, like just under the eye line and nose line. Now, the neck, the neck comes from the bottom of the ear and curves in. The more slender you want the build to be, the more you curve it. And from the side, the neck comes from the chin and angles back to cover the spinal column. But it shouldn't be thinner from the side than it is from the front. Right? Now let's carry all of those features over. The eye line shows me where the eye should be centered, but how far back do I go? I go just, I can pretty much um, copy and paste it from right here. In fact, all of this stuff, I can just copy and paste. So you should go one half of an eye width back to get where the eyeball is. It looks a little alien just because of the, the way that nose is drawn. So let me clean that up. Merge these together. And that's basically where the, the eye is placed. Now the nose is still going to touch back to the face directly at the corner right there. So here's what's different. Since the nose is cartilage, you decide what the shape is of it. <laughs> this is no longer universal. This is specific. So this is where I start designing a character. And I say, okay, I want their nose to be like that. And that's going to give me kind of a, a general slope to use for their brow ridge, which is their forehead, going up into their cranium. which does slope down a little bit. And then their eye, this is where we get into custom. I know where the eyeball goes, but I get to decide what is the shape of the eye from the side, and it's gonna be more triangular. And then based on that curvature, I can decide, okay, what is the upper lip gonna be like? How full are the lips? How rounded? How much do they come back? How strong is the jawline? How curved, how angular? And then the ears are gonna fit between, right behind the jawline, but between the ear, I'm sorry, between the eye line and the nose. That's where the ear goes. I can use this same trick that I used here to figure out how far back the mouth should go but it's not necessarily a straight line, depending on how I design the lips. And then the top, that's a brow line, that's gonna be useful with expressions, but then this default hairline here, this shows me where hair starts coming out of the head. And either hanging down into bangs, curving back, giving me a hairstyle, and eventually rounding out to the front of the ear. But that's the hairline. 
then based on those decisions, I can kind of customize that design and echo some of these gentle curves. I can decide on the age. I can put in eyebrows, which will go under the brow line and get a full character. I should have isolated the, all the blacks on their own. So let me do that quick. So that's kind of how you can map out believable facial structure. And that's just all imagined. Now check out how that changes when I um, change the overall head shape. So I'll quickly just draw in this character from the front, right? So that mouth is a little bit curvy. It's got a subtle little Cupid's bow there. The lip is fairly squared off at the bottom. The jaw drops down like that. And it's a little bit more rounded, kind of photocopy that black line over here and then match that on the other side. My ear is not fully developed yet, but a full character would need an ear design as well. Ears are always different. I match as much from the, from the side as I could in the front view. And now the eye, I want to take that same kind of general amount of opening And that same general amount of white and iris showing, along with the cornea and the pupil. And then for the nose, I want to pay attention to the shape of the nostrils, angle of them. And then whether it's upturned or downturned, there's a slightly upturned. And then I have kind of a squared off ball of the nose, so I can make that kind of more diamond shaped here. Upper eyelid, lower eyelid. Eyebrow, I can just photocopy, pretty much the same. Placement, height. Off to the side, and then the hairline comes out here just like this. Scribbles around, bangs hanging down on this side, curves down to the front of the ear, and then what we call the, the mid cap of the hair is poofed up about that much, and then the back piece of the hair is like that. The neck I curve down. and so on. So you can see that's how you can kind of get a character to match front to side if you're just designing them for yourself. Give you a nice female example there. Uh, character designs, especially if you're going for aesthetic beauty, we like symmetry. So you can basically just copy flip and place as long as they match the template to get kind of a, a beautiful uniform design. So there's no real mystery to how to draw realistic people and characters. What's hard and it shows me that I'm a little bit wider on that side, which helps because that kind of will slim her out, and make her even match better with the front. Yeah, so there we go. So that's using the facial template just to design a character out of the blue. And you can see it works pretty well, and they'll start to match pretty well front to side. That can